This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and this will be the first part of a three-part series in which I'll show you how I painted this Kador Conquest model, one of the new awesome colossals for War Machine. I began by priming all of the pieces of the model red, using Army Painter Pure Red. This is kind of an intermediate between Kador Base and Kador Highlight, and it's basically the equivalent of GW's Evil Sun's Scarlet. This is just to save a lot of time, seeing as the primary color of the model is red. Then using an airbrush, I provided some shading on all the areas that of course would not be exposed to the light with Mephiston Red. If you don't have Mephiston Red, I'd recommend using Kador Base from P3 or Privateer Press. So using this airbrush, I just focused on all these areas in which, again, light would not normally hit. So they're either purposely in the shade or the connecting parts between the legs and the arms and the bodies parts so and once again I just use an airbrush to save myself a little bit of time um, if you don't have an airbrush feel free to just use the paints directly on these areas Though the airbrush did save me a considerable amount of time, as you'll notice it still took a decent amount of time to do, as once again, the primary color of this model is red, because it's Kador. I also tried to do a gradient on the shields. I tried to get lightness at the top to the darkness at the bottom of the shields. Next, once again, to provide a little bit of shading, I put a Kerberg Crimson Shade into all of the recesses of the red areas. This is, once again, just to provide a little extra depth of color and a little extra shade to these areas so that you get a nice variation of reds. You don't want to just paint one color of red in these areas. And I just, as I said, focused on the recesses and kept all the raised areas, the colors we've already been working on with the airbrush. This will not only save you a lot of time by only focusing on the recesses, but it'll save you a lot of shading as well. As you can see here, I'm getting all the shading on the body and just focusing on all those really depressed areas. If after a single shading, you're unhappy with the depth of color, feel free to do a second one. Just make sure that the first Caraber Crimson shade is completely dry before proceeding to the second one. If done really heavily, Caraber Crimson will actually become almost a black with these reds and produce a very, very dark tinting of color. Though shading doesn't take a lot of time usually, as you can see it actually did take a lot of time once again with this model because there's a lot of recesses and a lot of red areas, but that's great because it's a colossal so it's a large model and it's going to look epic on the battlefield. When the shade was dry, I then applied an edge highlight 
over all these red areas with Wild Rider Red. I only focused on the parts of the model that would be exposed to the light, and what I did was I held up a flat piece of paper against the surface, and then using an airbrush, I quickly grazed the surface with the Wild Rider Red, which is actually almost an orange. If you don't have Wild Rider Reg, I recommend using the Privateer Press or P3 equivalent, which is Kador Highlight, which is another bright, nice, bright red. So as you can see, it will just make these edges pop a little bit more and stand out really nicely on the model without going too extreme of an highlight. And I continued the gradient on the shields by making the top edges really nice bright reds for the Wild Rider Red and going all the way down to the Mufiston Red at the bottom of the shield. This step didn't take very long because I only focused, as I said, on the very exposed areas of the model and just the edges of those areas. I then started on all the areas on the model that would normally be black, but I decided to paint them gray liner from Reaper, which is a very dark matte gray. Well, I like gray liners first that it's matte, and second, it actually has a really nice contrast when light hits it. In the shaded areas, if you put gray liner in, it'll appear as black. When it gets hit by certain light sources, it'll appear as dark gray. So it creates a really nice tonal variation in a single step, as opposed to black, which just appears as black when painted on a model. I also painted the top parts of what I'd basically call his shoulder blades with gray liner. And then later on in this tutorial series, we will use gray liner to provide some smoke effects and worn out effects on the feet and the chimneys. And then I use gray liner on the sides of the shields as well as the symbols on the shield. And now that the black areas of the model are done, it's time to start on the third major color of the model, which is going to be the silver metallics. So first, I did a one-to-one -one mix of Shadowed Steel and Abaddon Black, and I applied this to the very front of the shoulder areas of the model with an airbrush. Now, when using metallics with an airbrush, remember to use glaze medium. I applied basically one part paint to one part glaze medium, and then thinned it down with airbrush thinner, just to get a good consistency. If you don't use an airbrush, sorry, if you don't use a glaze medium, when using metallics and airbrushes, you tend to get a very flat, non-shiny appearance. And once again, I only used an airbrush to save myself a lot of time. This is a large model, so an airbrush makes this much easier of a process. And I also use this color combination on the chimneys. Next, I focused on all the silver areas of the model, other than the pre-painted ones that I just did, with shadowed steel. If you don't have shadowed steel, I recommend using Bolt Gun Metal from Games Workshop. And, as I said, with my airbrush, I just focused on all these metallic areas of the model. And once again, I used a one-to-one -one mix of shadowed steel and glaze medium, and then diluted it with thinner, so that it would go through the airbrush very evenly and have a nice even coat on the model.
Though I really love the large size of these models and the pieces of the Colossals since they look amazing and very epic. They do take a lot of time to paint, as you can see here, and as almost all of the model that is in red is silver metallic, this step took a really long time even with an airbrush. And those hard to reach areas that I couldn't do with an airbrush, I eventually just used a normal hand brush, and for those ones I did not use any glaze medium, I just used shadowed steel such as you can see here when I'm painting under the chin and behind the head of the model. And with this step nearing completion, we can turn our attention to giving some really nice depth and shading to all these metallic areas, and then highlight all of them up to a more polished color. 